Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 3 Take, where we talk all things Major League Baseball. Here's Kyle Corwin and Nate Reyes. It all starts right now. Ooh, welcome back to the 3 Take, presented by SeatGeek. This is episode 384. I'll be your host, Kyle Corwin, and I'm here with my co-host, Nate Reyes. Nate. Sorry I missed you, bud. Welcome back. Yeah, feels good. Feels good. All is fine in the world. Don't worry, guys. Just had a little bit of family stuff. Everybody's got family stuff. So, yeah, unfortunately, it was just a last minute thing. Couldn't do it. But I heard you held it down, man. I'm proud of you. I did what F- I could. 50 minutes of solo dolo. Yeah, 50 That's minutes. That's big of, time. I think it was 52, to be exact, of just talking with myself. So... If people listen, I appreciate you. But if not, I totally understand. I wouldn't probably <laughs> want to listen to somebody talk to themselves for 52 minutes. But, I mean, there's a lot to cover. And I just I'm proud figured, of you. figured I'd try to knock it out. Give the people something to start the week. Um, so, welcome back. Glad to have you back. Um, you got anything for buy, sell today to get us going? You know, maybe I have both. How do you feel do you, about that? We kind of talked about this before we got on. Do, do you want me to just, do you want me to get mine out of the way? I think you should get yours out of the way. Okay. Because ours is just going to, mine. mine's just going <laughs> to hit us on the ground and we're going to be up, running. Set us up for our topic. Well, I may have something for us before that, but All we'll right. see. Uh, is it my spicy? Buy, is it? I think, I think it'll, I All think right. it'll be intriguing. All right. It was it was rather intriguing on on uh, Twitter today, or X, whatever we want to call it. Um, I'm not doing that. I'll sell that. Buy sell, buy buy sell for me. It's quite literally a buy. I sent you the screenshot last night. Finally pulled the trigger on the Trey Turner World Baseball Classic Uni. Dude. I mean, we're in like peak oh, peak man. Trey Turner mode right now and i said you know what there's just not a better time to snag it so i went i was looking around i was looking for the ever elusive navy blue team usa jersey didn't have them at the stadium for those unaware they had they had the fake ones but they had the fake ones which no thanks yeah uh finally found what i was looking for snagged it should be here by next episode so I'll, I'll and i'll quickly come to your defense because i already hear i can i can tell the listeners are just like oh wait for him to get hot and no you've been contemplating this for a while and it had nothing to do with his performance it was just whether you wanted to spend the money on a jersey or not so no there was not a bigger trey turner fan in yeah. the month of march than yeah. i yeah so i don't want anyone thinking that you waited for this hot streak no, it absolutely was. There wasn't a bigger defender of Trey Turner this year than I. Yeah. I not to get into fantasy here, but I traded for him in fantasy from you while it's he true. was still struggling. So if that's any indication of my it's belief in, in Trey Turner, it was only a matter of time. Um one little addition to this buy sell for me. Okay. I to celebrate Bryce Harper hitting three hundred today. Mm-hmm. I I very well may just snag snag a Harper jersey tonight. You're gonna it go back be, to back jersey. Purchases. It might be back to back days of jersey. Whoa! Purchases. I I mean I don't go full price on them. I know where to find some bargains, but sure. Still, nice nice uh, couple days for my jersey collection. I was able to to skim through a little bit of the group chat. It, is is the powder blue on the table? Is that in consideration? The powder blue is the target. Okay. All right. All right. Good. And I need the powder blue with the number on the front because, as you know, with a mm. lot of teams, the replicas and everything, they differ vastly yeah. from what's actually on the field. Yeah. The one that he wears, one that the Phillies wear, is like it has the number on the chest on the yeah. side opposite of the team logo. So yeah, has to be that specific one. I just got to find right. the right the right option. Good for you. Good for you. Back to back days. And I might it's complete the trifecta sick. tomorrow. I've been on the hunt for months now for a, a cow jersey. That's I true. Ju- we need something for the for the trip. 
for the upcoming for the upcoming trip. So I yeah. might just I might go three for three. It might be a, a heater of a <laughs> of a week so, for jersey purchases. On a heater, yeah, that's big time. Good for you. What do you Good got? What's your buy you. sell? I am for obvious reasons. I'm selling the trade deadline and I'm buying waivers. Let's go, dude. This is gonna be way more exciting than anything we saw at the deadline. And especially since one of the biggest names at the deadline is now being in the waiver pool, if you will. So I think which yeah. Again, we have to do it's just a requirement. Every time we do this, we have to put the disclaimer out. We usually record on Thursdays. It is currently True. Wednesday night. Yeah. Uh, schedule reasoning. We have to do the old nighttime recording from uh, every now it's and old then. School. This is old school. This is old school for for the old three o take. So we don't at the moment know. Correct. You say this will be exciting, and that's only because we don't know what's don't happened know. yet. So by the time you're hearing this, you, you very well. Yeah, possibly we'll know. It, who knows? But uh, as as it stands right now, at this moment, we do not know, and it's kind of it's intriguing to say. I'm least. shocked by some of these names that are just like it's it it really is when like your fantasy team is done for the year and you're not making the postseason and you just you just have a yard sale and you just dump everybody and throw them in the waiver pool. That's this is kind of what's happening. I see. I could see some of these names being a bigger impact on a on a playoff team. A bigger impact as a waiver addition than a trade addition that they made a month prior. I could see some of these names being that big of an impact. So for you, the trade deadline is catch catching the ricochet here. Like you couldn't you couldn't just let the trade this deadline is alone. Better. No, I think this is going to be better. And the reason I'm doing this is because I could see this probably being something long term. If this is the structure we're going to keep moving forward, expanded postseason, the the earlier trade deadline, this is something where I think we're going to continue to see teams that are on the bubble at the deadline that push the chips into the table. They could have a bad stretch a couple weeks and then they salary dump. And I, because of this, like it's almost like baseball could be growing like a new trade deadline. We'll call it like the waiver deadline. And well, this is already the great, greatest time of the year for a lot of teams. Cause we're getting the September call-ups here in a sec. So you, you mentioned the earlier trade deadline. If anything, the trade deadline is like a day later now. Cause it used to be the 31st. You know what I mean? August Whatever. 1st. I mean, the expanded- I think it's, it's the more expanded along the postseason is certainly a factor yeah, here. But that sure. and it's and it's teams that probably wouldn't be buyers with past structure are now buyers. And again, like they could be on the fence around the deadline and they gotta commit. And they press that button and then they play like crap. And then they gotta sell. And now we have like trade deadline 2.0 chaos uh, i love it i love I, chaos i had a poll that i wanted to share but i don't want to i don't want to disrupt the flow here let's just transition i i may save it for later in the episode All right, I'm, I'm i may i may even say it for a di- save it for a different episode uh let's let's transition to the waiver dump of waiver dumps the los angeles angels officially thrown in the towel saying Ooh. we gave it our best shot Let's run it back next year, maybe, possibly, if we have the right pieces. If we have Shohei, who knows? There's a lot up in the air. We'll see. Thanks for trying. Come out again next year. I, I'm so torn. Because we've been, like, since the deadline, we've been, like, good for the front office, right? Like, this is what you have to do. If you feel like this is your last shot, have an Otani... And you're on the fence, like you gotta, you gotta go all in. We gotta go for it. I'm torn because, like, I, I I'm kind of like, I want to pat the, I want to pat the front office on the back. But at the same time, 
I, I haven't looked at like the specific prospects and where their rankings were since the deadlines. So I don't really remember, but this is what this is literally the definition of playing poker and pushing all your chips in the table. Like you went all in and you lost and you lost like on the flop, dude, you lost early. You weren't even really in the hunt going into September. Guess who learned what the flop means? Yeah. Over the course of the last month. I Good I get that you. reference. I I am a I am a I'm a poker player now. This there you is go. New, this is new to you. <laughs> I learned how to there play poker go. last last or this past month. So that was fun. There we so go. So I get I get your reference. That was early. It was early for the Angels. Yeah. Not not they a didn't lot get of hit on there. the river. I mean, like get, losing this in late September. That's a river card, and you're like, yep. hey, you know nope. what? Like, you got to tip your cap. That's the river for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I this know the river. Sure. This is early on the flop, so I, I just like again, I'm torn because I, I, it's this is what we ask for. This is what baseball fans in general ask for, and like obviously, uh, an Angels fan may have a different opinion. But you ask for if you have a chance, let's get rid of these prospects because we never know. And let's go get some names and let's try to make a run. Doesn't pan out. You basically have a fire sale. This is not even a sale. This is like a bankruptcy. Come come pick it up at the front of the store this kind is of thing. Go straight to jail. Don't collect <laughs> 200 as you pass go. Sit in the corner and think about what you did. Uh, that, this is kind of what the angels are dealing with right now uh look you you kind of touched on it i'm not gonna walk back what i said i'm gonna stand firm in i what was it the was it like a day or two after the the deadline or no i guess we recorded like the day after possibly and i was like you know what i'm i'm cool with it i'm yeah i'm all about it but I we know. did say we did say that's the risk you run right we said, look, we're happy for you. You're, you're pushing the chips in, but you run the risk if this doesn't work out. Yeah, that you're gonna you're gonna lose big. I the the catch though is I don't think anybody saw it going this bad. I thought we'd at least get meaningful baseball from the Los Angeles Angels in September, and they said, hold our beer. Like, Are they is... the most cursed team you've ever seen? And this is Behind I'm asking the... I'm asking a Red Sox fan who went 108 years, or Cubs fans going 108 years, and Red Sox fans going 86, 83 years, whatever 86. that was, 86 don't, don't years. So like, that's what I'm asking because I think it's legitimately in that conversation. I. How can I phrase this? I'm going to separate that into two different categories because the the Cubs and the Red Sox are just they're, like they're cursed, but they're on a different level. If you want to talk like recent era since like. This is the start of a curse. This is the birth of a curse. That's the name it of this has episode. To be. It is. <laughs> birth of a curse. Birth of a curse. Episode 384. <laughs> um, no, for me, I think they're. They're slightly behind the the Mets. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know though because like, it. I mean, the Mets were at least in the World Series in what was that fifteen? Right, which is which is what I was saying is like I have to. I'm gonna have to split these in like two different categories. You yeah. take the Mets this side of the World Series, the Angels this side of well, because yeah. that was what 2015. Yeah, the the Mets World Series. This side of 2015, I'm going Mets and angels like right behind them like when was josh hamilton no close that was third. that was pre-2015 i think and that could have you could argue that was the start of the curse was that like 20 that like 2011 i mean look like you can run down the list you can run down the list albert Pujols. Josh Hamilton, Anthony Rendon, 
the waste of Mike Trout. 2013 for the Angels. I I mean, at what point did we did we see? I, I think this is in full swing. I think this curse is in full stride, and I think it's going to be going for a while. So are we talk? Are we talking like prepubescent curse? Like yeah. this isn't the birth? Yeah, like like, a pre, like maybe they're a preteen. This is a preteen curse. This is a preteen, dude. The Hamilton thing's bad. Well, I mean, hold on. If it's in full swing, we're talking about like the terrible teenage years. We're yeah, that's I true mean, if, too. They're just a moody teenager. Yeah. If this thing is in full swing, we gotta advance it up a little bit. Um, we haven't even gotten to the list. I mean, I'm sure you've heard by this point. Yeah, they, we gotta get to the names at least. Who they who they put on waivers? But they put on waivers uh, Lucas Giolito. Matt Moore, Ronaldo Lopez, Dominic Leone, outfitters Hunter Renfro and Randall Grichik. And then Hunter Renfro goes out today and hits a home run on waivers, which saw that, yeah. Such a strange concept to me because like yeah, I, why I, does that take so long? Well, I mean, it's what, a, a 24 hour period? I I get the I get the po- like the the realm of possibility that they could go unclaimed. But a guy like Hunter Renfro, he's going to get he's going to get claimed. So in theory, he's not even on the Angels because you know that he won't be on the Angels in 24 hours. Yeah. So he's kind of just float he's like a ghost. He's out there just floating around. He's not really, really odd. He's not really wearing the team's uniform because he doesn't represent them anymore because yeah. he's on waivers and he's going to get claimed. And then he goes out there and hits a home run. Randall Grichik, I think, hit one too. What if you get hurt in that window? I guess you go unclaimed at that point. Talk about a rough draw. I, I don't like it. I saw Bader in the lineup for the Yankees too. And that one, obviously Harrison Bader is another name, but it, it's definitely strange to see. It's put strange out, to celebrate. Like, are you, are you celebrating that thing? Or I mean, you you're the angels. You have like a 20, well, you have a nine inning window to market yourself. Yeah. I guess you could say, I guess yeah. I put out a tweet today clearly in jest but i was like a player who gets put on waivers should be able to then assuming he's in the lineup the next day should be able to come out in whatever team jersey he wants to market to the most that would be sick who he wants to who he wants to claim him or just a blank jersey or a blank jersey obviously this guy's going through an interview right now just an all-white jersey no logos all I know is he shouldn't be wearing the team's jersey that put him on waivers. It, mm. Do whatever mm. you want with mm. blank jersey, different team jersey, but not not yeah. the team's jersey put him on waivers. I don't I have I we probably should have talked about this before. I have no interest in speculating because obviously these guys are gonna be landing in spots in in a day, right? So there's no point in like choosing landing spots unless Yeah, I mean we we'll know by what? The morning? I don't yeah. know. So there's probably what... people that already know the spots. That are coming back and listening to this. So Oh, for sure. I don't know. Yeah, if we so need we'll to save speculate. you. We'll save you the time on that. But ultimately, all of this is in an effort to save potentially a, a max of about seven million dollars in salary. And shout out Addison mm-hmm. uh, uh, Yankee World on Twitter on X, whatever. Uh highly recommend follow. Just a just a good follow. Good good account. Put out some uh pretty Pretty good tweets. Bangers, if you will. They tweeted, was it today? I think it was today. So the Angels traded away multiple top prospects for rental pieces just to release them to waivers a month later to save $7 million, all while fumbling what would have been the greatest return for a rental ever. This is undoubtedly the single worst trade deadline in MLB history. Curse. curse and i get that like giolito wasn't having a typical giolito year randall grichik he's kind of a 
borderline fourth outfielder could probably start a couple games for for some people but it's still like these are impact names and like you said you kind of like blew up your own organization to make this happen you know like you went all in an interesting note here if all this is from ESPN, if all six Angels players are claimed, the team stands to save around seven million dollars in salary over the season's final month, enough perhaps to push its payroll beneath the two hundred and thirty three million dollar competitive balance tax threshold. Dipping beneath the tax would allow the Angels to recoup a second round draft pick as compensation if Shohei Otani <laughs> leaves Silver as a free lining. agent rather than a fourth round selection. So only if they're below that luxury tax and Shohei leaves. Would you get a second round draft pick? Yes. Mm. A lot of play there. Woof. Woof. Birth of a curse. Yeah. But, th- but these are big names. Look, like they're like Hunter Renfro has postseason experience, big right handed bat, big pop. Like there are teams that will absolutely need somebody like that. Lucas Giolito, you could argue there are probably some teams that are going to be in the hunt this offseason. That are going to be interested in and imagine if you can give him a postseason ride and say, hey, let's bring it back. You know, Randall Gritchick kills left handed pitching, plays an excellent defense, can play all three positions in the outfield. He's getting a spot. Renato Lopez. Sorry, I'm not I'm not super in tune with like middle of the road relief pitchers, but I'm sure he's going to find a spot. So, yeah, dude, it's like, this is a yard sale, all for seven million bucks. But it makes sense to to get below that luxury tax, I guess. Like, if it's lost, it's lost. At the very least, try to get a second round pick, and I don't know. Maybe there's some high school Shohei Otani they'll get in the second round. Who knows? Speaking of lost, uh, Alex Cobb lost his no hitter. With one out to go in the ninth last night. Um, Well, for us last night, if you're hearing this on Wednesday, two nights ago. No hit bid through eight and two thirds. He finished the game, which I love to see. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm kind of torn on that too, because on one hand, I like it. I like if they get pulled after they lose no hitter, give the fans a chance, give them standing no. Sure. Sure. But at the same time, I'm also like, give if me that you're CG. In the ninth, if I don't get that hit, no hit, yeah, give me the CG. Give me the CG. Give me the shut piece. He wasn't able mm-hmm. to get, wasn't able to get the shutout. Finish with nine. He finished the game, but allowed uh, one hit, one run. Had one walk. Finished with eight Ks. The highlight of the game: Austin Slater's catch to end the eighth. Nasty. You, I think you kind of had to assume at that point that it was It was going to happen. Yeah. Like you get that out of the way. You're like, all right, we're good. The ball, the ball in right field. I, I feel like I need, I need you. I need you to lay Come out Come on there. now. I need, I you need took a the shortcut. extra effort. Yeah. You took a sh- the short route, and I I need I need all out. To quote D Row on MLB Network this morning, I need a dive. Yeah, I need a dive. Yeah. What do you have to lose at that point? Like, yeah, you're up. I, what were they up? Like, it was like six zero. Yeah, good enough lead to just like if this turns into a triple, who cares? If it's inside the park home run, who cares? The run yeah. ended up scoring anyway, as we now know. And you still won the game. Lay out. Come on now. And it's not, uh, I'm not, I don't want to attack him too much because it's not like he, there wasn't max effort or max speed put in. It's just no, like, for sure. I need a little bit of a better route and I definitely need a lot of green showing up on your chest no matter what. Yep. And think about that. Like if you make that catch, now you're in that, now you're in glory. Like you're a part of that story. You know what I mean? You're like the David Tyree to Eli Manning's throw. Like nobody knew who David Tyree was until that helmet catch. So maybe the, you get into that kind of refresh me. Who was the catch? Who's no hitter was that? It was for the White Sox. Or no, was that Burley's? 
That was Burley's Dwayne Wise. He robbed the home run. Was that to end the game, though? That wasn't to end the game, was it? Why well, don't no. I feel like that was in the yeah, I don't think it was, was to it end not? the game. Okay. But it might have been deep into the game because he was a defensive replacement. Okay. I was going to say, that's yeah. that was the first thing that came to mind. And I... that is probably at the very top for me. Yeah, as I far mean, as like robbing a home run, like literally, that's yeah. And it but wasn't like, like the camp <gasps> jump. I got it, Rob. It was like this is full speed bang catch a, bang. Yeah, catch the ball as the like run. they show yeah. the side <laughs> angle. It's yeah, like hitting dude. the top of the fet, like yeah. two feet below the fence, and he like carries his glove up to make it look like yeah. None of that. That's big time up there. Um, but yeah. I mean, you could have been a legend. I don't know who was in right. I don't remember. Yeah, I'd... If you could end the game with that catch, yeah, that's the highlight of. Yeah, the and you're freaking season. out. The boys are freaking out if that happens. You know what I mean? Boys are running, dog piling in right field. Forget the yeah, pitchers. Possibly. Every, everybody's possibly. dog piling in right field. Yeah. Um. 131 pitches for Cobb. Oldest oldest player to throw that many pitches in a game since. AJ Burnett in 2014. According There's no baseball, way you have this reference. stat, but I would be so curious to see what the top velo was off the mound. It had to have been like 94, dude. I have no idea, but he said he was cooked. They were asking about <laughs> it afterwards. He said he was cooked coming out for the night. Yeah. But he said he heard his walkout song and the roar, like the fans were juicing yeah. him up and he's like that's all i needed to go back out there and and dude do what I, do what I that makes me so happy i've said this before i love when i'll die on this hill i say this every time when players feel the energy but also like they're human like us and the and the walkout song like gets you and yeah. you're like yes like I'm bought in. Yeah, don't tell me you don't hear. Don't tell me you don't. What's yeah, don't tell me you block that like, out. Like no, no, I'm not buying it. No. You're in. You got caught with it. That's sick. 131 pitches. Good I'm for the old man. It. Talking about energy. Can we please, please talk about the Philadelphia Phillies for a second? They're doing it again, dude. Or like an hour or 12. They're doing it again. You listen to me and you listen to me right now. Sharpie, the Philadelphia Phillies are going back to the World Series. Sharpie? Sharpie. That's Put them in the marker, World folks. Series. Put them oh in the World Series. It's happening. <laughs> spare me the Dodgers. Spare me the Braves. It's happening. It's coming back to Philly. Man, the vibes are so good. I don't even care that they lost today. It the vibes are that high. Yeah. They don't even care. It doesn't matter. And this you know is a team that's just like it losses are just like this. They just wear it, bro. They just wear it. Just glances off of them. I'm about it. I mm. Mm. playing the Brewers right now, right? Uh they, yeah. Uh are they? They just finished up series with the Angels. Yeah, because uh yeah, I think they got the Brewers starting. Oh that? yeah, duh. Yeah, little 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 teaser for later yeah starting so, friday yeah um let's go man september is gonna be a test man i had a thought and i lost it that's okay how do i how do you how do you find a thought that you lose mm. do you just move on or do you stress over it and wait until it comes back i stress on it wait till it comes back i typically lose my cool I mean, do you, you want know, to sit here in silence kind of with me until I until I figure it out? I don't know about all that. You can you can do your thing. I was possibly 
thinking, and I knew I just said earlier that we weren't going to speculate, but when I saw Hunter Renfro hit the home run in Philly, and I was like, mm, no, they could don't kind of use another outfielder and slide Schwarber to DH full time. Yeah, but he's the Renfro's not going to make it to that point in the waiver list because it's reverse. It's reverse win totals. Maybe they're not that. They're not that super. I mean, you think about it like as a wild card team. I mean, yeah, you're what middle of the pack. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like they're not that high. I saw a picture of the waiver. Yeah, I saw it. I'm trying to find it. Still trying to find my thought from earlier. It'll come to me. I, believe I was you. I was starting the sentence by saying I don't care about and I was presumably going to be dismissing something or or some take that I heard over the last couple of days but I can't find it. Hmm. It'll come to me. Did you find the waiver order? I did. I'm not even looking for it. I'll find it. There it is. Cool. The Phillies are 22nd on the list. So teams that maybe the basically the I would say the cutoff is going to be the Marlins at 14. Cuz then you have Marlins then Reds, then Giants, then Red Sox, Diamondbacks, Twins, Cubs, Blue Jays, Phillies. I don't know, dude. All comes I don't down think to teams the, I don't needs. think the Red Sox are no they're done toast kiss them goodbye the right, Marlins are kind of on the on the fence too I don't know maybe maybe just maybe thought never came to me we're just gonna move on Bryce Harper 300 <laughs> I already already touched on that but Little tip of the cap to the king. Did you see the did you see the bit from the game before? He did that he, he hit three hundred today, Wednesday. I did not see the but, bit. But yesterday they were asking him about the home run he hit last night. And he was talking about which I'd absolutely love this. They were asking about it and like, you know, like what contributed to it or whatever. And he was like, Yeah, I was driving into the ballpark this afternoon and I heard I was listening to sports radio like I like I do a lot of times like Philly sports mm-hmm. radio and he was like there's this fired up fan on there Chuck he's like and he was saying that Chuck apparently calls in all the time and he loves him and he was like yeah Chuck was all fired up and he go and Bryce was like you know what I'm gonna go deep tonight for Chuck <laughs> <laughs> goes out and does it and I'm like this guy man you talk about just a perfect fit for Philly I I know, and and I, I, I feel like it. all of the baseball world kind of, kind of got on him a little bit in the first couple years in Philly. You know what I mean? Especially when he said the wrong, the wrong city during the presser, and you know, obviously like the struggle there. But I think everyone, love him or hate him, I think everyone can agree he is home. You know what I mean? He is home in Philly. And he's going to be immortalized. That guy's going to have a statue outside of that, outside of that ballpark when it's all said and done. Yeah, I'm, you want to talk buy, sell. I'm totally, (laughs) I'm totally buying the, the fact that Bryce Harper genuinely loves Philadelphia. And he, he, he addressed the pandering recently. He's like, no, this is totally legit. Like, this isn't pandering. Like, I love yeah. it here. I love the fans, whatever. Yeah. But I bring that up because I saw this video the other day. It was him. I guess it was when they were in D.C. And forgive me, I can't remember the account. Some some baseball guys that had some credentials, whatever. They were down there talking to him before the game. They were showing him some card. I don't even remember what made the card so, like, unordinary. But they were showing it to him. And they're like, do you want this? And he was, he was, he like laughed about it. And he was like, nah, he's like, maybe if I was in a Phillies uniform, I'd take it. But, and it was, it was him and a Nat, like a, it was like an old card. Oh yeah. It was him and Nash. He's like, nah, he's like, maybe if I was 
in yeah. Philly's uni on it, I take it. I'm like, this guy just, this guy yeah, gets it. He gets it, dude. He, loves he gets it. it. So 300, he's 12 years in. Basically averaging. Has it really been that long? Yeah. Wow. Yep. Got to Philly in 19. So got his fifth year going with Philly right now. Averaging 33 home runs a year. Just for, we're never going to come back to this episode and check. But do you have a finishing number? He's 30. Oh, like career? I have no idea. Yeah. He's 30. Yeah. 12 years in. Can we give him another 10 years? Or is it going to be like, I was going to play drop it down to eight. That's literally what I was going to say. I was like, play it safe, go 38. That's 264 more home runs. I think I think he gets 500. Yeah, what's think, what's 20? Eight seasons of an average of 20. That's 160. That's 160. Right? Yeah. So that's 460. And, and that's, I think 20 is on the low it, end. Yeah, that's playing it safe. So hey, I mean, barring any, I mean, he's at injuries. he's at 14 this year. He's only played you know 98 games. Yeah, but and his not home, healthy games. No, and his home run rate, I don't know if you saw that. It was like 1% or 2% the first few months he was back from injury or first couple months he was back. It's at like 8.8 or something right now. Yeah. The last week or two. Or maybe it was like the month of August. It's like 8.8 .8 or something. It's just insane. I mean, I think it's like it's not absurd to say he's going to have – he can have six home runs in the month of September. That's very doable. That puts him at twenty. And this is and this is going to be in a uh, hundred and twenty ish games, hundred and fifteen to hundred and twenty games. So missing forty games. Like, I think if you average him out twenty a year, the rest of his career is very low. I give him five hundred at least. Yeah, safe. Yeah, easy. And that's like. That's like a, I'm um, definitely first ballot in my mind. You get over 500, your first ballot, and obviously, like he's he's already on the track of like, you're a Hall of Famer, like you're doing Hall of Famer stuff. Oh, he. Every, the whole league fears you at different points in your career. Like he's he's checked that box. You know what I mean? This isn't like a I'm sticking around and just accumulating numbers. No. This no. to me is like, now we get to watch the next maybe eight years. And say, you know, you're just going to be passing milestones. No, I, I will certainly be wearing whatever uniform I get, whether it's tonight, tomorrow, next month, next year. I'll be wearing that to Cooperstown at the inevitable induction ceremony for Bryce Harper. Trey Turner, another guy that is just going off right now. He's I'm hitting in Philly. Who would ever say that? 365, 35 hits, nine homers, 26 ribbies, 21 runs scored in 24 games since the standing ovation. Which, not mentioned in there, 24 games, 20, 22 of those games, I believe, he's gotten a hit in. I mean, it's got to go down as the most successful standing O of all time. Right? And I'm, I, without a doubt. And I'm sure people are tired of hearing about it, but it's at this point, it's legitimately like a phenomenon. It's like, how is this? You don't see it. You've never seen it really like, like this. If it was like a week, if it was like, no, scratch yeah. that. If he went out and had a great weekend after the standing out, I'm like, okay, yeah. that's cool. Good for him. You know, good for the Philly fans for, right. for holding it down for their guy. Right. If he has a good week, wow, that's pretty cool. 24 games under his belt since the standing ovation. 365 with nine homers. He's had four home runs in his last three games. 
Yeah. The day Job Alec, well done. Alex Carr on Twitter. The day before Phillies fans gave Trey Turner a standing ovation, he was he had bottomed out at a 657 OPS. Not even a month later, 26 days to the day, Turner sits at a 748 OPS. Raises OPS nearly a hundred points within a single calendar month. <laughs> I mean, if if the Phillies uh, aren't your World Series represented for the National League, what are we talking about? They're a very easy team to root for. I mean, Bryson Stott quietly yeah. having like a very solid year. Alec Bohm, mm-hmm. the whole lineup, honestly. I mean, mm-hmm. you got Kyle Schwarber going blow Breaking for blow, of his own. <laughs> single for ho- trading singles for home runs yeah. every game, it seems like. I mean, oh. Uh, and then not to mention, uh, you talk, you want to talk about blow for blow, 59 home runs in the month of August for for the Phillies, the second most in a calendar month of any National League team in history. I it's I'm I'm a fan. And it's fun to watch. And it's it's going to be I I I I hope it's, this isn't too early. I hope all this stuff isn't too early. That's all I'm hoping for. No, I want we, it to ride. We all made it the to way September. Through. September is when you can officially. Well, I mean, the thirty first of August. Sure. Once that's gone, we've made it to September. It's an off day for a lot of people, so or a lot of teams. So it's an off day for the Phillies too, right? So so August is done. Yeah, in September. we made it. Yeah. The Phillies made it to September. At this, I don't want to say you you can coast, but you can now start to ride the narrative of the postseason. It's not just like, well, we got to make it to September and then we can reassess where we're at. Right. You were in the driver's seat with the wild card. Big time. Five game lead. I thought it was more than that. Isn't it like six? I'm seeing is it, five, is at, it five? At, as at the time of this recording. Sure. Three enough, game, five. three games up on, on, uh, cubbies. Cubbies in the second spot, but yeah. So yeah, I I feel plenty confident. Another it's team, theirs. another team. I feel very confident in right now. The Seattle Mariners Goodness. finished the month of August with twenty one wins. It was their winningest month in team history. If you had like an all vibes it's World beautiful Series, beautiful to look at. When you're looking at the standings, it's beautiful. If you had an all vibes World Series, start it right now with the Phillies <laughs> and Mariners. Phillies. Oh yeah. I mean, sorry, O's, but I mean, 21 wins in a month. I didn't. I get. I think I got fun with it. And I'm pretty sure I said with my my prediction that I had the the Mariners in it. I think what I had the prediction? Mariners in the World Series, didn't I? You know what? Preseason. I think you were right. Hold on, let me confirm here. Yeah, because we I just went back and looked at this recently after they they went on like a slide and we were both laughing at ourselves and now it's like whoa, whoa. now it's it's possible again. I said Padres Mariners, I think. I think that was my prediction. I got to confirm here. I mean, give me one of those. Eight and two in their last 10. 108 run differential, plus 108, obviously. Really solid, really solid home and away splits. 39 and 29 at home, 37 and 28 away. You had Padres over the M's in seven. Mm. We won't talk about like the actual prediction, but team-wise. I'm 50% proud of you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I don't know, man. I don't know. I did see, I didn't look, uh, obviously, no secret, I've been unplugged for the last few days. The Red Sox like Are took trash. some chunks, ch- took some chunks out of the Astros, didn't they? Am I crazy? No, you're crazy. The Red Sox are dead. The Red Sox are done. It's over. They didn't take a couple. I 
I, I had, feel like it was like Red Sox played the Astros last week, and then there I mean, was a series, and then it was the Astros again, right? Here, was it in Houston, and then here. just finished in Fenway? No, I'll give you. I think it sounds like you're looking for like a score by score breakdown here, so I can give you that. Okay. Game one, fr- uh, Monday, Astros thirteen to five. Game two, Astros six, Red Sox two. Game three, Astros seven, Red Sox four. Uh, and that was, that was immediately following, uh, a series loss to the Dodgers, Hmm. which followed a series loss to the Astros. So Red Sox are dead. Hmm. Look, I thought, I thought they were beating up on the Astros a little bit. So I I thought it was a little bit more. No, you were sadly mistaken. It was quite the opposite. 13 to five in game one. That was where the beating up happened. Tough. Um, just a quick note on the Red Sox. I don't want to talk about them anymore, and I'm sure nobody wants to hear me talk about them. But kidding aside, and I thought about this today. Look, hand up. I know that there are points throughout the season where I like tried to get my foot back in the door as like a fan, and was like, oh, like I feel good, vibes are high. We swept the Yankees, blah blah blah. Honestly, honestly, in the deepest depths of my soul. I was out on this team all year. And you can ask Nate. Like yeah. I, I think what I was trying to do was convince a reverse myself psychology yeah, that, projection. That they were worth watching and to kind of try to hype myself up at certain points. Sure. But it's you gotta give me a little bit of slack. It's a long season. I was trying to do what I could. But yeah. you go you can go back and check my personal tweets from March. I I knew how I felt about this team yeah. back in March, and that never really wavered. Uh, but anyway, enough about the Red Sox. Ronald Acuna. I just want to touch on this little incident, this on-field incident, because it didn't get a chance to, because I think it happened the night of the day that I last recorded. Uh, Monday night, I believe. W- what even? The why? why? I don't get this, dude. I don't get this. It seemed to me, how many fans? Two, three? It's hard to tell. I couldn't tell if one of them was the third. I think there was three because they said a third was uh, apprehended by Coors Field staff and cited for Mm. trespassing. The other two were arrested and jailed by Denver PD for Mm. trespassing and disturbing the peace. Uh, Maybe they were trying to take him. Maybe they're just trying to pick him up and take him and... Maybe go clone him. I don't know. I don't know if you're disturbing the peace. I mean, Ronald Cunha Jr. is having anything but a peaceful season. I mean. But what's the point? The man's a menace doing? on a base pass right now. It didn't seem like a hug situation. It was like a, I got to hold you still. No, no, no. Apparently, they were trying to get a picture with him. And I was talking with somebody about this. I don't even. Was it talking about somebody at work or something? I'm like. There are other there are other show, ways to go about that. Like, show up early in the ball game during BP and call him over like a normal fan. Or if Crazy. he does, if he doesn't come over, have him like throw up the deuces from a, from afar and get a selfie with him in the background of your picture. Stupid. Like there are other ways to go about this than molesting the guy in in the outfield. Come on, our streak the streaker stuff is like it's had an uptick this year. I think. Am I crazy? I don't know about streaking. Well, not Actually, like streak, but like, but like the the rushing the field or running on the field thing has been. It's been. I feel like this is a peak year for it. It's happened a lot. People do, and I don't for understand this. why. I don't get. What, I don't get the the reasoning for it. Look, man, the the desperation to get the clicks and the views or whatever it is that people have the motivation for these days to to have themselves out there it's at an all-time high like you got it you just have to be reckless these days you can't not to get all serious but like it's kind of sad the the state of society with how how you make a name for yourself these days it's it's like you have to be a sensationalist you have to be running out on the on the field of a professional sporting event and like molesting yeah. these guys 
while they're playing. You have to spread misinformation. You have to do this. You have to do that. Like, I think gone are the days when you just put out like a good product or you just yeah. do your job well, or you just, yeah, it's, it doesn't do the you trick docu- anymore. You document the game from the boundaries of the seats. Like gone yeah. are those days. I feel like, like people just do whatever they want to do nowadays. It's, but what's weird no is that like that, that was a thing back in the day too. No, no, you no. Know? And, no, for sure. But I'm just but, saying it's, it's, it's certainly on the rise. Like yeah. in comparison, it's, it's insane. It's all weird. It's just weird. It's a weird thing to do. It's not a normal thing to do. It's not funny. It's not cool. I, I've never understood it. My question for you is, who had the worst? Who had a worst day? Those guys that got arrested, or the security guards that are very clearly fired. Like. You would not be fired. It's so hard to get fired from a job like that. Dude, it is, it is a rough week for security guards. Sure has been. I mean, we'll get into the White Sox here in a minute, but my goodness, what a week for security guards. Dude. It's hard to get fired from those jobs, I think. Yeah, because nobody wants to work anymore. But you have God, one what job. am I, 80 years old? Shut up. You have one job, though. What is wrong with me right now? I I need to stop. I need to stop. Why do I sound like an 80-year-old man? I'd like to think that none of our listeners are a field runner. I'd like to think that. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I think we can all just give a a little pat on the back for all of us, saying that everyone here listening and talking. I think we can all safely say that we uh, we are, are prone to sitting in our seats. And what better way? Perfect to do that than by purchasing those seats via SeatGeek. Use our promo code 3 take I'm glad you're a VIA guy, not a VIA. That's, no, that's weird. T-H-R-E-E-O-H-T-A-K-E. It's our social handle. Use that promo code on SeatGeek. Save $20 for whatever ticket purchase you want. Baseball game, that, football game. Use that towards your bail when you're trying to run on fields. Yeah, I mean, if you don't stay in your seat, if you're if you are one of those people, use it toward your bail. Um, talking about the security guards, what happened in it in Chicago? There's no way that. Please tell me, it, like, are we being punked? There's no way that's a real article. There's no way that's a real report. There's no way that's really what happened, right? Like, there's no way. How is that possible? I don't know. For those who don't know, please fill them in. All right. At Peggy Kaczynski. Nailed it. That's that's not a real person. This is this whole thing isn't real. None of this happened. Chicago. I'm, I'm starting to think Chicago is not even a real, real baseball team. It's not, <laughs> it's not, well, I White told Sox you to a, burn it down. You didn't. You were on to something. I <laughs> forgive me. I was clearly I was misled. Peggy Kaczynski on Twitter. Again, don't even know if this is a real person. I legitimately think we're being punked. It's possible this has already been debunked. But if not, if this is the latest report and it's factual, wild. Peggy Kaczynski on Twitter, X, whatever. As I reported on ESPN 1000 just now, the shooting at guaranteed rate field during a White Sox game was indeed an accidental discharge by one of the women, quote, grazed by the bullet. She reportedly snuck the gun in past metal detectors, hiding it in the folds of her belly fat. I have so many questions. This is insane, dude. Have you ever watched that 600 pound life show or whatever? (laughs) The only episode I ever saw was one of them got an infection And their, like, skin was, like, super infected, right? And it was because a sandwich, a piece of sandwich... No, stop. ...was left under the fold, and they couldn't find it, and so it, like, got into their skin and stuff. Stop. All I'm saying is that this is real. (laughs) This is real. (laughs) This is nuts. It's not that I'm doubting you, because... 
Yeah, I believe it. As much as it pains me to say, I believe that this can happen. What I don't understand happening is the whole metal detector thing. The the only theory that's been presented to me that I can get on board with is that, and I'm if, if this is how it all really went down, like if it, if she was able to get it through, the only way that she could have done this is if it was under the fold. The thing goes off, and they say, "Oh, ma'am, can we watch you?" And she goes, "Oh, that's metal." inside my leg from a surgery Mm. three years ago. Mm. And then they say, well, can we wand you? And it goes off and Mm. what? I don't, I don't know. That's the only theory that I can come up with. Otherwise this makes no sense. My theory is, well, I wonder, you know, the video with the guy that like is security guy that doesn't touch anybody. Does he work in a course field or does he work at guaranteed rate? It's, one of the two places that man has has a job at one of those two places he's either head of security at one of them so well that's probably the guy if he does work at guaranteed rate as his day job that clearly was the guy that was doing the wanding because yeah that's apparently true. it was he a metal detector them. that failed he trained them yeah I, I i don't know man i don't know that it's a tough, tough look. Tough look. You remember when Plaxico Burris was in the club? Old school Giants wide receiver. He was in the club and he shot himself. This is worse. This is Plaxico's niece, I think. She grew up. <laughs> she got big. She got large Marge, yeah. and then poor, she poor girl snuck snuck a gun in there. What are we doing, bro? What are we doing? Like, why are you packing at a White Sox game? Like, I, so, I get Chicago. I believe yeah. me, I I get that element of it. But like, sure. it's a day game. Mm, I don't know, man. A guaranteed she's, rate. She's a big woman. She's not first in line at nachos. She will make herself first right. at line. The the I'm missing the Stop quote it. here a little bit. Stop <laughs> it. I'm missing the quote here a little bit. Who got grazed from the bullet? Another stranger or large march? The it was the woman. Was it not the woman with the gun? I that's, think it was like accidental. Uh, that's what I thought herself. too. I just wanted to make sure. Just wanted to make sure. That's what I. That's what I figured. It's kind of hard to tell from the quote. That's all. Um. Yeah, I. It's a tough look. <laughs> this isn't a real story. I'm convinced this was like. This was not a real, not a real occurrence. Um, what was very real, however, Mookie Betts in the month of August. Just want to give a little love to Mook. I know you weren't here last episode, but I went into a little bit of a deep dive into the shakeup in the National League MVP race. Man's as, is hot. Man's is hot. As it was last reported, Mookie surpassed Ronald Acuna Jr. for the top spot. Uh, for the time being. For the time being. We've still got a month of ball yep. left. But across Major League Baseball in the month of August, Mookie Betts, had an average of, he hit 452, first in all of baseball. Run scored 31, first in all of baseball. On base percentage, 509, first in all of baseball. Slugging percentage, 808, first in all of baseball. Whoa. And he's also set a new uh, career high in home runs. And we still have a month of baseball left, 36. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What, what's interesting, though? And I, I, I felt, I felt uh, the need to bring this up. It was brought to our attention a tweet from Max Fried Stash on X. The tweet reads, "Azuna straight robbed." This was from like a few days ago. Mm-hmm. Azuna straight robbed for Player of the Week. OPS Azuna. One nine one seven bets one five four zero advantage Azuna. Weighted runs created plus 391 for Ozuna to Betts 322. Advantage Ozuna. Home runs 5 for Ozuna. 1 for Betts. Advantage Ozuna. RBIs 10 for Ozuna. Betts 7. Advantage Ozuna. 
Average, mm. 524. For Ozuna, 615 for bets. Advantage bets. The tweet finishes, unless batting average is now important after being told it wasn't, there is a bias. Just wanted to bring this up. Mm. Because apparently there's a West Coast bias now. Is, is that is that the narrative here? What? The conversation was about player of the month, not player of the week, right? No, player of the week. Yeah. I mean, what are we arguing, though? Because you talked about how Mookie is now the, the new MVP favorite. I mean, overall numbers with a, yeah. with a, Azuna are not in that no, neighborhood. No, but that, it's it's not it's not we're not looking at the MVP race Just here. Looking we're looking at, player at the, the player of the week, and like I think we can all recognize, like, yeah, a guy could win the MVP, but he could have a a lesser mm-hmm. week than yeah player yeah. X, and I got in this you. case, player X is Marcelo Azuna. But it's not even about that. Like, sure, maybe we could say that Ozuna got got snubbed. Sure. But like, let's not pretend that there's some like West Coast bias now all of a sudden. Also, let's not pretend that Braves fans are suddenly supporters of Marcel Azuna. So let's back that up a little bit. I believe the word ball washing was thrown out by a particular individual regarding Mookie Betts. You want to talk about a team that l- lives on MLB social media, the Atlanta Braves. I Can you name a team that gets talked about and posted about more? You can't. No. It's it's this Braves lineup. 86 players on the in in the lineup have 20 plus home runs. Austin Riley, the greatest third baseman ever. Freddie Freeman, who Dansby All Swanson, these games who started, yeah. Matt yeah. Olson, MVP for life. Give him the MVP for the rest of his career. Yeah, let this Stop. thing die. Let this thing die. If you're a Braves fan, just let this die. You got bigger fish to fry, and th- this isn't this isn't this isn't worth your time. And are you really coming to defense for Marcelo Zuna? Yeah, that's. I mean, yeah, yeah. Your point is. Are we gonna do more that? More valid than mine about the bias thing. Like, no, like don't don't, don't act that, like yeah. we're defending Ozuna all of a sudden. Yeah, not gonna work. Um, moving down the list here, fantasy players to add. Just a couple couple recommendations here for those of you still on the hunt. The number is dwindling, I'm sure, as uh, the season I am progresses. Not in the hunt. You're not in the hunt. By no means, Adam Duvall. <laughs> 39 yeah. rostered in 39.1% of leagues. He's got a he's seen a recent bump of 18.3%. He has 62 points in the last 15 days. Okay. 20 for his last 56. 46 total bases in that span. Uh from August 26th through the 29th, he had a homer in every game. Prior to Wednesday's game, today's game, he had seven homers in his previous nine games. And in that span, had an OPS of 1707. Another name to look at. Again, this is all based on whether you're in the hunt. If you're in the hunt, you need a need a, a roster ad. Consider these names. Kyle Finnegan, rostered in 28.2% of leagues, has mm. seen a recent bump of plus 6.2%. 6.2%. Converted 14 straight save chances since July 17th. He has Nats? been the Nationals? Correct. He has been the number one relief pitcher over the last month. He has sported a 2-1-3 ERA in August with nine saves, which is tied for the most in baseball. The Nats playing good ball helps that too. For sure. People want to laugh then. I talked about that last episode. They I, have been I, said, good ball. I said even you laughed at me when I brought up the Nats like the episode before that. And I said, mm-hmm. that's fine. Keep laughing. May not be next year, may not even be the year after that, but you just sit tight on the Nats. They'll be back. They'll be back. Uh, weekend series to watch. Kind of alluded to it a little bit earlier. Phillies at the Brewers. I'm in full on Phillies mode and I don't even care. I don't I don't plan on apologizing either. Game one, Zach Wheeler versus Freddie Peralta, who by the way, has had a very nice run as of late. Hmm. Game two, 
And I hate the Brewers too. So like I'm not. I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah, you can't stand that team. Game two, Aaron Aaron Nola versus TBD, and Game three, Ranger Suarez versus Wade Miley. Never even been to Wisconsin before, so couldn't tell you where the hatred is. It's just there. Can't explain it. Give me the obvious one. Four game set. Braves in L.A. Oh boy. NLCS preview. For sure. And the Braves the rotation is lined up to where this could be this could be what you're looking at in a post series postseason series the Dodgers maybe not so much um game one you got Spencer Strider going against Lance Lynn that starts Thursday four game set Freed going game two for the Braves against Urias for the Dodgers Bryce Elder going against TBD for the Dodgers um and then finishing up Charlie Morton on Sunday going against Bobby Miller that's not I mean that's a slam dunk You got to watch this. Oh, without a doubt. Not to cut you off, though. If things hold out the way they're currently shaping up, they will meet in the NLDS as top two seeds. Okay. Or no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. It would be the NLCS. The Phillies, should they ride this wave, would meet the Braves and the Brewers. Which is a must. For sure. We need that. And then if the Brewers, as the third seed, take that matchup against, as of right now, I believe the Giants, they would see the Dodgers, and then you'd have Brewers, Dodgers, Braves, Phillies. And then winners of those two would then meet in the NLCS. So you're right. I mean, it's a possible preview, but... This is, yeah, this is a heavyweight matchup. I'm riding the Phils. Here for it. Here for it. Not the Sunday night game, by the way. Another L. It's a little weird. Um, to be fair, oh, <laughs> I found the Sunday night game. Take a wild guess. Oh, don't tell me. The Yankees Astros. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, that's fine. I'm cool. I mean, with the that. prediction, the 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 preseason lineup, that makes sense, but. Like, get the Yankees. They need to be able to pivot. Just pivot on these games, dude. No one yeah. wants to watch that. Show a little bit of flexibility here. Come on Seriously. now. Seriously. NFL does little. it all the time. All the time. I mean, how many months in advance do you need to know? Like, Yeah, seriously. Like, you could have figured this out three weeks ago. You can't drive the trucks to the ballpark and just leave them there for three months. Like you have to go to the city of choice. <laughs> yeah. Th- that weekend. So we like, adjust. why can't we pivot? Yeah. Whatever. Just not it. Insane. Uh, closing the book here. Talking Yankees real quick. Jason Dominguez, Austin Wells getting the call up. You like that? Let the kids play a little bit. Love it. Did not expect the Jason Dominguez one until Bader went on waivers. And I was like, yep, it's coming. So super excited. We've been hearing about this dude for a long time. I don't know. He could be the savior. He could not be the savior. It's hard to tell. I really love Austin Wells being up there. Catching has been a crazy hole. Boys with Volpe. Let's see what's up. This is this is perfect. This is exactly how this is what we've been asking for. And Donaldson being gone is just another cherry on top of all this stuff. So I'm excited. I'm excited to what see a, what the what the little the new wave of baby bombers. They're probably gonna have to come up with a new nickname because the baby bombers before didn't that didn't work. So what a what a win for Nate the day Josh Donaldson gets it's a big dub gets released it's a big that's dub a, that's a huge dub yeah um you know what I'll close out the the part of this I was gonna maybe save it but let's go out let's end the week on a good note here let's do it I put out the tweet earlier 
and the more the more I sat on it, I was like, this is actually a really interesting question. And I, mm. I was curious to get your take on it. Who is going to have the most electric atmosphere in October? You've got some heavyweight options. You've got Camden Yards, who at this point, are, they're a lock. Mm. You've got maybe not as much of a lock. Eh, eh, I don't know. Depends who you ask. T-Mobile Park. Wrigley Field. Citizens Bank. I mean, you got some strong options in there. I mean, yeah. we, we hate to talk about it, but Houston Houston can bring the juice a little bit too. Yep. I've been in Atlanta. Atlanta. They can, I mean, they can bring it as well. Can't sleep on can't sleep on Truist. I'm I can't walk it back now. I'm I'm all Philly. I'm all Philly. The vibe's been set and like they've just been preset, cocked, loaded, ready to go for a month and a half now. And nothing seems to waver that. No. I'm Place glad you said that. Off. I'm glad you said that. Serious question. Serious question. Because I thought about it. I'm like, shoot, we could we could really pull this off. Drive is, up to Philly. Is I was gonna say, I would I just want to catch one postseason game in Philly. Is there a way we could possibly make this happen? Assuming it's so I mean it would have to be the wild card game. A, a wild card game. What's that drive? Like four hours? No, not even. It's like two and a I half. Mean, we wouldn't exactly be leaving at ten forty six PM, but let me just see what it shows up as right now. It's not even I can't spell. Citizens Bank. So because wild that card would be, is during the week, though. That's yeah. that's tough. Okay, so it's actually it's three and a half, so it's longer than I remember. I was just up there like a month ago. Yeah, but we're um, excited, so that'll 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 breeze by for sure. I mean, we I would drove love to, it. We drove to Boston and back in twenty four hours, so we can do three and a half hours. I think so too. Um, yeah, that would be. I think that series starts, the starts the on a Tuesday. It starts the third because my birthday is the second. The wild card starts the third. So it'd be third, fourth, fifth, if necessary. Yeah. So Tuesday, Six Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. Friday's off and then the DS starts Saturday. Which means you may... I'll like, say this, dude. If it's a game three... I'll fly in on Thursday instead of Friday. Well, I guess it would be a night game. So mm-hmm. you'd have to fly and in. It's all going to be in Philly as long as they stay in their spot. Yeah. And, and then we'd have to drive up that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I'm in. I'll fly I'm in down. Thursday. We'll we'll hit that and then turn around for Baltimore that weekend. Come back. Hang oh, out for the weekend. Boy. Oh, boy. I'm about it. Oh boy! I could wear both jerseys if I get if I get Bryce and Cal. I could wear both within a matter of what three days. I'm about it. I kind of want a Cal one too. I kind of want a Cal one too, but the, I don't want to be. I don't want someone to find me and put me on blast if I have a Yankee tattoo on my wrist and I'm wearing a cow jersey you know what i yeah, mean yeah you'll like, be that's, all over bleacher report i know dude i could see it i'm gonna be worse than that guy dipping his hot dog in his in his beer using it as a straw yeah you don't want that yeah all right all right put it in uh put it in the books that that's gonna happen if if all lines up which i mean at this point it would take a catastrophe for for that plan to not work out this is a Philly very to, realistic plan yeah philly i seriously doubt it's gonna lose that top spot well, hopefully, hopefully not. And then Baltimore, that's a lock for the DS. So that's gonna be a late. I think we stay in Philly that night. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's gonna be oh, nuts to drive home. No, we could pull it off because it would be the game at the latest would be over at eleven. We get home by two. Or, I mean, it'd be a late night, but I'm not trying to stay in Philly. That's true. We have no. Friday to recover. This no, is thanks. working. This is working. It can happen. I'm all in. I like this. Teams, when we, you know what you need to do. When we manifest this stuff on recording. It's, it's true. 
it's it's holding ourselves accountable because then people are looking they're like all right well we've done this before do it, so so do it we've done this before we did it with wbc did it with the yankees red sox yeah we've done Fenway. it twice now i'm sure back in the day we did it for coors field when yeah you i was came gonna out. say you could argue maybe yeah. three times so yeah make it let's make it four we normally don't miss on this <sighs> teams you know what to do nate's right you know what to do uh yep. that's all i got we'll see you guys uh, I guess Monday, barring anything. We'll see you guys next week. I will have big news on Monday. Don't go chasing curveballs. I'm excited to hear about a surprise. Uh, this is news to me. No, you we know. love y'all. And as always, looking forward to talking more baseball with you guys soon. Until next time, stay filthy. <laughs>